Senator Hassan. Well, thank you very much, Chair Blumenthal and Ranking Member Johnson, uh, for holding the hearing today. Uh, thank you to all of our witnesses for appearing today, uh, as well as your commitment to aviation safety and protecting the public. Uh, to Chris and Clarice Moore, um, thank you for being here. I am so sorry for your loss. Um, the picture of your daughter is a reminder of the reason we're here today and why aviation safety is so important. So thank you for being here. Um, and to Mr. Salapur, you mentioned in your testimony, as I understand it, that the Challenger disaster was a wake-up call as, and an example of why safety is so important. The teacher who was lost in that disaster was Krista McAuliffe from Concord, New Hampshire, and her loss is still felt today, as is her example. Uh, so um, thank you for um, invoking her memory today. Uh, and I wanted to start with a question to you, Mr. Salapur, and apologies if some of this has been covered uh, because we are in and out, but um, as a whistleblower, you raised two safety concerns regarding quality controls during the manufacturing and assembly process. Can you describe the internal Boeing culture around reporting safety and quality concerns? Right now, basically, you know, I have very, I guess, negative attitude towards the quality concern. You know, when I bring something to my boss to say, you know, we have problems with this, and he prevents me from even documenting and prevents me from even sending the information to the SHMEs, you know, the subject matters experts, to me that's a problem. Yeah. You know, a quality manager telling you not to write your concerns right. and not to send it to the, uh, you know, the subject matter expert to just, let's say, you know, I'm, I don't know for sure. You know, they, they close a gap of like three quarters of an inch without shim. You know, right. that's concerning. Yeah. Our rules are zero one zero, oh. So I said, you know, I want to write that, but don't send it. So not only were you discouraged and really told not to document it, What's your impression of how comfortable other Boeing personnel are with raising their concerns to management, both before and after you came forward? Well, I think it's very negative. It's, it's really, they think that, you know, like we had a situation where they had debris in the, in the gap, yep. and my, my friend put some inspections in there, and the, the boss was telling them that, you know, are you trying to stop the production? You know, those are significant problems that, you know, if you don't inspect, you have to inspect to get a good quality airplanes out. Right. And what I'm trying to say is the attitude at Boeing from the highest level is just to push the defective parts regardless of what it is, unfortunately. So what you're really saying is if, so from the top down, people are discouraged from coming forward. Uh, and so people are quite reluctant um, to come forward I in this culture. Absolutely. And, okay. you know, the fact that I asked for the data from, I, I complained to Mrs. Fall, you know, and uh, she said she'll have somebody send me the information on 787. To this date, I haven't received any. Okay. So uh, another question for you, sir. In 2020, Congress reformed safety and certification requirements for aircraft manufacturers following the 737 MAX disasters. What was your experience with how those reforms were implemented and whether Boeing appropriately followed them? My personal opinion from what I've seen from bottom up, it's been nothing. Okay. And Mr. Jacobson, as a former FAA official, do you have any thoughts about how effective that agency was in implementing and overseeing those reforms? The attitude from day one was, was not good at upper levels of the FAA. The message that I heard right after AXA was passed was, uh, we're already doing all of this. So that's the wrong attitude from day one. Mm -hmm. And then what I saw, I tracked a lot of the implementation of AXA, uh, working with Senator Cantwell's office. And what I saw there was um, kind of a half-hearted, uh, look at all of these recommendations and, and requirements. Um, they tended to lump them all together. Yeah. 
and called them work streams and said, we've got that covered. That's in this work stream or that work stream. And instead of taking each individual provision very seriously and attacking them, that, that was not the attitude. Okay, thank you. Uh, this is a question to both Mr. Pearson and then again to Mr. Jacobson. You both raised concerns about the 737 MAX, one of you directly with Boeing and the other with the FAA. Given the safety failures that have led us to this hearing, how can Congress better empower whistleblowers, protect them from retaliation, and reestablish a willing adherence to safety standards? So we'll start with you, Mr. Pearson. As I said, Senator, um, you know, we really shouldn't have to rely on whistleblowers. But with that said, I think that uh, all these um, programs need to have much more oversight because what happens, for example, at right now, if a Boeing employee wants to submit a whistleblower report to the FAA, they submit a hotline report. And those hotline reports go in, and then it could take months, potentially, for them to investigate it. And sometimes we've been told that uh, they don't, employees don't really know what happened. And so I think that there's a lot more, it needs to be a lot more attention. And, and again, I, I think what we need to talk about is leadership at all levels, uh, not just at the senior lead level, but even at the very frontline level. We need to treat people with respect and we need to value these employees. And I think that will help a long way. I, I think we're not providing enough training to these employees. I know that in the factory and we're putting individuals in responsible jobs and they need a lot more training. And I think that will help a long way of uh, preventing having to use whistleblowers. Thank you, Mr. Jacobson. Yeah, I'm hopeful that uh, Mr. Whitaker, the new FAA administrator, will will really take on the challenge of changing the culture at the FAA so that FAA is back to doing their job as a regulator. Um, if if they just rubber stamp everything that the you know the manufacturers do, then it's really um, they're not doing anything useful. And so we need to get back to them doing a useful job as regulators. Thank you for that. And um, Dr. Prushniki, I have a question for you, but I am out of time, so I will submit it for the record. I'm just really looking for your recommendations about how to eliminate these grave safety risks. So we'll submit that for the record. Thank you.